Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crowley. I'm back with another video. Today I'm finally getting to a vid that has been requested by many people over the years. I'm going to be talking about how uh, I used the old GarageBand program to make most of the music you hear in my videos. Now, I am not a professional uh, musician. I learned all of this just by trial and error. This is a How to Draw channel. I'm not going to suddenly switch to doing this kind of video. In fact, this is probably the last time I'm ever going to cover any of this, but uh, people had been requested. I think, you know, almost for seven or eight years. Krilly, are you ever going to do a video about how you use GarageBand? Well, here it is, guys, and I hope you enjoy it. Now, what I've got over here is a uh, the loop uh, browser that shows all the loops you can get in GarageBand, which comes pre-installed in almost any Apple product you buy. Uh, I want to show you how crazily easy it is to get something going. I'm clicking on all drums here. Without thinking at all, I'm going down to the very first thing uh, available. It says 70s ballad drums. I'm dragging and dropping it over here and when I hit the uh, space bar there you go. Got a piece of music going already. Now I'm going to do a, co a copy and paste uh, to uh, get a few of these going and uh, let's say maybe four is all we need. And uh, now I'm going to reset over here. This is, uh, we're going to get beyond this, guys. Those of you who think this is like incredibly easy, uh, just want, you know, I can't assume that everybody knows uh, this program. So I'm really starting with the absolute basics. Again, choosing the very first thing. I'm not using my brain at all. I'm just grabbing the very first baseline. Uh, and uh, let's see what happens. Right, so uh, it gives you an idea that, you know, basically a, a chimpanzee <laughs> with no uh, training at all could start making music using GarageBand. I'll do uh, just one more to show you how you might continue to build this into a piece of music. I'm going to go to synths. The first thing available is a bass synth. We've already got bass, so I'm going to come down here to the whoa, chordal synth pattern, drag and drop it in here. Uh, that volume sounded very uh, high to me, so I'm reducing the volume, uh, but basically not doing anything else except uh, cutting and pasting uh, to fill up the remainder of this line. And let's go back to the beginning and hear what happens. These three different tracks, one on top of the other. enough of that. Now that shows you, you've probably heard music like this on YouTube videos and thought, boy, that doesn't sound very good. <laughs> and I agree. Uh, you know, I did it in a few seconds and I, I wasn't even thinking about stuff. I was just grabbing whatever was available. I want to move on now to how I use GarageBand uh, to hopefully create something a little more uh, sophisticated than this. And I'm going to go back to one of my uh, earliest uh, tracks from many years ago. Uh, in the string section, there is this thing called orchestral uh, strings, uh, zero 05 is what it's called, and I'm just going to play it for you here. Now I liked the second part of that. It sort of divides into two parts, right? And so I took that and I used that. I'm just going to play uh, out of my iTunes the piece of music that I made using that. So that shows you, uh, in the early days, what I was doing. I, I took the second part of this thing, I turned it into a loop, and I built uh, a song on top of it. Uh, and then as time went on, I kept experimenting and hopefully got to a, a higher level. I'm going to move on to another piece of music uh, called uh, Photographic View. Give me just a second here. Okay, sorry, actually the, the next piece of music I want to talk about is uh, called Dubsteppy, and it's using the uh, newer version of GarageBand. Uh, many of you may have noticed, why are you using the old version? Well, I got really used to the old version, uh, and I still can't quite figure out how to do things in this newer version, but I wanted to show you the one piece of music that I have done 
in uh, the new garage band uh, and I called it dubsteppy and uh, I want to show you how you can begin to kind of edit a basic loop into something a little more melodic. This is called power tool bass and this is what it comes uh, out sounding like when you just click it uh, in the program. Okay, so um, uh, I liked the sound of it, I kind of liked some of the components of it, but it seemed a little too repetitious to me. Uh, and what I want to do, give me a second, I'm going to refocus here. So I took that power tool bass line uh, when I was working on this song quite some time ago, and I dragged it in, and you can see this is the sort of component piece. Uh, and what I did is I chopped it up into three different smaller parts right here. Uh, and I'll just go ahead and play it for you and hopefully you can hear. Well, let's go back. This is what Power Tool Bass Line sounds like originally. Right, repeats immediately. Uh, here's what I turned it into. So you see how it, uh, it delays a little before it repeats. Now that stuff that sounds, uh, at least to my ears, quite professional, I can't take any credit for it at all. Uh, you got this thing called Tenacious Beat and then Intergalactic Soft Pad. That is 100% just the loop as it comes out of the software. Now you might have heard a little bit of a sound of um, like something from a uh, soccer stadium <laughs> and I probably did add something there. I don't know if I can find it immediately. But uh, there, I started to play around with things and this, the reason I call this dubsteppy is there's this break. Uh, uh, hang on just a second, I'll prepare for this. So yeah, there's a part where there's a, there's a break in the music and um, the newer version of GarageBand gives you all these sort of dubstep sounding things and you're going to see what I did with them right here. And you can see each one of these represents a different uh, part of that sort of dubstep, dubstep sounding stuff. But that's basically uh, showing you how, again, you can create quite a lot of music based uh, more or less entirely on loops, maybe just a little bit of editing to, to my ears making it slightly more melodic, but otherwise this really is just loops. Now I think it's time to start moving into the phase where I began to write my own melodies, and uh, it is this song that I returned to, um, uh, or that I referred to earlier as Photographic View. So I haven't used this piece of music so much over the years, but it's based on a melody that I came up with uh, in high school, and this uh, really is me taking lots of different notes uh, to construct a melody of my own rather than using loops. And you can see that I've layered a bunch of different sounds here to kind of make it richer. But down here is where you see the new melody come in. Now it's got this sort of uh, 1980s <laughs> synth pop kind of sound to it, which um, makes it very easy to sort of line up all the notes and make a melody because they all hit at such regular intervals. But what happened is, uh, at the end of the song, I wanted to wind it up uh, with a slightly different um, syncopation. Is that what they call it? Where uh, the rhythm gets a little more interesting. Hang on, I'm going to get to that part of the song. So I noticed that they had this feature called musical typing, and uh, when you open it up, you get a sort of a virtual keyboard on your uh, laptop, and then when you touch keys on the uh, keyboard itself, it sort of corresponds with notes on the piano. So I worked out a, um, a little bit of a tune to end the song, and uh, the sequence of notes goes like this. Let's see if I can get it right.
Okay, so that you can hear just the, the rhythm of it is completely off. I don't know how to play piano. Uh, sounds terrible. I did a little better when I recorded it. But I found a way of actually breaking the notes into individual pieces. Hang on, let's just get to this part of the song. Alright, so you hear what I did there is I got it to sort of follow the rhythm that I heard in my head. And every one of these notes has been split up. I mean, you got two together in one block right here, but every the rest of them uh, have been separated one from the other, and it allowed me to sort of micromanage or make very slight movements to get that kind of jazzy rhythm just right. So uh, that's just a little piece of advice. If you're having trouble using this uh, musical typing uh, feature and you're like, boy, I can't get the, you know, every time I try to record uh, a melody that I'm playing on the keyboard, uh, the, the rhythm of it isn't perfect. I found a way of breaking uh, the individual notes up and then, yeah, you can kind of, you can fake it. <laughs> fake good keyboard playing, even though you can't actually do it in real life. Let's move on to uh, the next one, which I think will be even more interesting. So within the Apple library, there's this section called Ensemble, and when you click on that, you get access to a lot of pieces of music that were recorded by professional musicians, bands, orchestras, and so forth. I found this one piece called Glide. Here's what it sounds like originally. And then it just repeats. Now, I uh, know that the Beatles, back in the 60s, used to play tapes backwards to create interesting effects, so I thought I'd try my hand at it. And uh, here's what Glide sounds like when you play the whole thing backwards. So uh, it doesn't sound exactly like that. I had to manipulate it a little bit to get the rhythm to work out. But that became the basis of this song called Psychedelic. Hang on, I want to sort of get a little further into the song so you can hear how it becomes uh, the, the basis of the tune, but not the entire melody. So you're going to hear that, uh, uh, you know, how I added drums and so forth, but very soon after it goes through one time, you're going to hear the second melody that I put on top of it. And that was, uh, again, something that I invented myself and just played uh, using the keyboard on, uh, on the laptop itself. Uh, so there's an example of uh, how you can play something backwards and manipulate it to create uh, a new type of a sound. Um, give it a try. If, especially if you're like me, you, you get to a point with GarageBand and uh, you're tired of just using the loops right out of the box. Uh, let's move on to a, a couple of more examples of, of fun things that I did to improve my songs. So I wanted to do something that would sound a little bit like a James Bond uh, piece of music. And I found uh, this really beautiful, I thought, uh, beautiful uh, orchestral arrangement called Indulge. This is what it sounds like in its original form. And it gradually gets more and more flowery until I felt it was not really usable for for my purposes. But I uh, I took that and again I played it backwards uh, and looped it together and it began it began sounding a little bit like this.
So that became my sort of James Bond sounding piece of music. I wanted to cue it forward though so that you could hear this one sort of big sound that I uh, had to create for this particular piece of music. So I reached this uh, part in the song where it was going to build and build until it cut out completely and then I wanted it to kind of crash back with a big James Bond wallop. And uh, this is what I ended up doing here. I'm going to play the last part of the build uh, right up until we get the actual uh, return with this big sound. Okay, so you hear that bam, bam when it comes back in. Uh, this again ended up being something that I found in the uh, loop uh, library and uh, it is called, uh, hang on just a second, it's called uh, Suspense Accents uh, Zero One and this is what it sounds like. It's like something from an old 1950s drama movie. Right? It has the, it sounds like the full orchestra just hitting this one slightly sour note. Uh, but what I did is I took that and I buried it deep underneath uh, for the big return, and I think it does affect that sound. And uh, yeah, somewhere underneath that is this slightly sour uh, suspense accent. I've used it a few times on different things, and that's a little tip for those of you who, if you want that big sound, having that buried underneath it somewhere. Uh, can make for an interesting effect. Let me show you just maybe two more things and then we'll wind this video down. So uh, using this same kind of musical typing, uh, you know, hitting keys on your keyboard, you can actually do drum sounds like that. And I used that to begin isolating individual pieces of percussion uh, to build this song called Waltz Time. And uh, this is what just the drum part of it sounds like. So you can see how I've lined it up. This is the kick, dom tut tut, dom tut tut, and that's how I create this sort of uh, three-quarter time to build this whole piece of music on. This really is uh, one of the ones where I can take almost uh, complete credit on it in terms of composing it and not basing it on any loops. Uh, there really is nothing in the song that wasn't, you know, in terms of melody, that wasn't me uh, putting it together. Let me show you the main uh, tune that comes in on top of that. Okay, so uh, after establishing the sort of, um, you know, bass line, uh, I suppose, of the melody, uh, I came to the point of doing my main melody, and I used, again, the musical typing to, uh, to create a piano line. Uh, it's called Grand Piano on Stage. It's this very big, echoey uh, piano that you can get playing on your own laptop uh, keyboard, and it sounded uh, like this. Now you can see in each one of these squares, these black lines symbolize me playing on my laptop keyboard these different uh, piano notes. And again, this time I used separate layers, uh, separate tracks, uh, to really finely manipulate uh, each one of the notes to get it where I wanted it to be. Now it's not perfect. I think it, you know, all of this to a professional musician probably just sounds awful. <laughs> but they made me do it, folks. They wanted me to do a video about this, so here it is. Anyway, you can see how uh, I was able to play it in in bits, you know, and then sort of fine-tune the location of it uh, to to get the rhythm just the way I was hearing it in my head. Let's play it again. And then here I had it to bring to another melody. So that becomes a completely different track. I wonder if I can find it on the fly uh, as I come down here. Uh, maybe it's this, yeah, this probably smoky clav and arena run together. This is the second melody.
so yeah, this was really where I uh, sort of came up with a tune inside my head and, and got uh, one way or another the <laughs> laptop uh, keyboard to uh, allow me to key it in and record it and, and sort of shift it around until it sounded uh, the way I was hearing it in my head. So, uh, yeah, if you are interested in making your own GarageBand music, hopefully some of this stuff has been helpful for you. I'm going to show you one last thing here which will probably make you chuckle. Uh, and that is that I wanted to get a drum uh, fill, I think it's called, where, you know, there's sort of a, uh, a lead-in. Let's see if I can find it. Give me just a second here. So there's a part in the song in which I return to that first melody, but I make it very quiet and quite spooky. A lot of people think that this is a very creepy piece of music, and this part especially has, like, demented circus time <laughs> qualities to it. But I want you to hear the drum uh, fill uh, that leads us back into the, the louder climactic uh, ending of the song. Here it is. Now that's an easy thing to imagine in your head, but it's a hard thing to uh, play, certainly uh, on a laptop keyboard, and so I came up with a kind of crazy idea of uh, doing the whole sound just with my mouth, <laughs> so that I would have a guide. Hang on, I'm going to play it for you. So uh, this is kind of embarrassing, but this is what uh, I recorded to guide myself in terms of getting this rhythm, um, you know, to have the drum beats hit where I wanted them to. This is just my mouth doing the sound effect. Okay, so you can see this uh, sort of purplish one up here. That was me uh, just creating the sound with my mouth. What I did is I took the uh, actual drum sounds down here and I used what I had excuse me what I'd done with my uh, mouth to to line up those beats with um, the rhythm that I was imagining I got rid of my own uh, voice I'm gonna sort of not delete it but mute it and uh, if we bring back the drums you'll hear hang on just a second uh, you can hear now this how it guided me to getting those drum beats right where I wanted them to be. So if you are ever trying to create a drum fill like that and you can't figure out how to get those beats in the right place, that is the Krilly goofball method of doing it. Just use your own mouth uh, to make the sounds and then you just uh, mute that track and nobody ever hears it in the end. Or maybe you'll turn it into a beat beatbox track and, and leave it in there. Um, but uh, there you go. That's my video on uh, creating GarageBand music. I'm pretty sure I'll never uh, do another one like it. And rest assured, next week we're going to get back to what people expect from this channel and that is how to draw videos but thank you for bearing with me I'll just go ahead and wind it down for now I want to thank you all for watching this video I really hope you enjoyed it and I'll be back with another one real soon <laughs>